Welcome back to uh, the Web TV of OWF 13. We're here with Simon Phipps, Managing Director of uh, Meshed Insights, uh, Alexandre Combe, Managing Director of uh, Ultimate Circle, and uh, François Pellegrini, uh, Chairman of uh, Akinetic. Welcome to the three of you. Thanks for being with us here today. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, just earlier today, you actually uh, had a panel on uh, Meshed Society and the freedom to innovate. So uh, we can start with you, maybe, Alexandre, because you are yes. the, the one that, that came sure. up with the idea behind this panel. So how did it all come and yeah. what it is, really? So initially, Ultimate Circle is fostering a free digital society. And among this main uh, uh, issue uh, we are concerned about, there is a freedom to innovate. Nobody talked very much about the freedom to innovate because it has not been proclaimed so far, indeed. Um, but the, the idea is... Um, Innovation is absolutely necessary to adapt to our world challenges. It has always been the case. By innovation, I mean um, 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 improving the existing, because uh, we start from existing things, existing systems, existing products, and we just need to improve them to move uh, forward uh, to a better life. So uh, it's absolutely important, especially in this time of uh, uh, global crisis, to have a maximum of people working on the world uh, challenges uh, we are currently facing, uh, uh, either from environmental or social or economical perspective, we need innovator to think about it. Uh, the problem currently is that innovator are just hampered from 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 working on on, on those issues um, because they have to go through a complicated process to have the right to improve the existing. So this is, this is the initial uh, idea uh, where this uh, panel uh, started. Uh, we need to uh, foster the freedom to innovate because uh, if we don't want to uh, perish as a previously and yet quite advanced civilization did, uh, we need to adapt to change, we need to innovate, so we need to protect innovators and stop discrimination among uh, each other. Well, with, and, uh, with the citizens empowered today and in a position of playing uh, roles that before only a business could do, obviously there are consequences. Absolutely. Whether, uh, whether they are positive or negative. So maybe we could touch on some, some right. of the positive or consequences first and we could go probably with, uh, I don't know, with you, Simon, or with, uh, with Francois. Let's... Let, let's f uh, Try and understand why there's a problem, first of all. Uh, the, the, in the, um, the, the obstacles that Alexandra talked about in the freedom to innovate arise from the fact that today citizens can play uh, any of the roles that used to be reserved just for businesses. So previously businesses were the only ones who could finance large projects who could d engage in manufacturing or production, who could di uh, distribute things to the market, who could advertise things. But in today's society, because of the internet, every citizen potentially can play any of those roles. So through Kickstarter or Indiegogo, you can fund a new activity. Uh, you can choose to create your own video or music or books or uh, other works. Uh, you can choose to distribute them to people yourself. Uh, you are able to make them known th either through social media or through traditional advertising. So as a citizen, you can do all the things that businesses used to do. But our laws and our regulations are still stuck in a world where citizens are only seen as consumers. And those old-fashioned rules and laws get in the way of innovation by today's real innovators, which is uh, the people. And so our panel talked a lot about uh, the obstacles that were in the way of individuals to innovate, but also the, the benefits that could be created when you took those obstacles out of the way. So, and obviously with, uh, with citizens now uh, free to innovate with this, they're, they're, they obviously can stimulate because we're talking about, uh, about local economy as well. Uh, it, so it's, it's national, global, but also particularly local economies because at a national and an international level, big governments and big corporations get in the way and abuse those old powers from the industrial society to get in the way of innovators. But at a local level, it's possible to empower innovators to do much more because the, um, the, the, the big entities are either not, watch, not, not paying attention or are simply not involved. And I think a uh, success story is a kinetic with that, right? Well, a uh, success story, uh, time will tell. We are, we are just starting. It's been two years since we had our first official funding from the Regional Council of Aquitaine to, to try this bet and uh, try to see if we could create jobs locally through um, uh, um, free technologies. 
So basically, as Simon said, the idea is that while big companies want to address big markets, so they do mass production, and mass production means outsourcing and going to other countries. So the idea is to say, well, everywhere uh, in the area, and Aquitaine is a very interesting field in that respect because it's both, it has both uh, urban, rural, and uh, urban areas. So you have many kinds of ecosystems, and you find people that have uh, problems and so they, they build solutions to these problems because now they can compose their technologies, their uh, free technologies together. And when they have a, a solution, they can maybe transpose this solution to another uh, uh, local niche market and then turn this solution into a product and then maybe we, we can create jobs and most importantly, keep these jobs where the people live. That is, in, in, in the, 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 the previous millennium, when someone was a great innovator, you say, hey, come to the main city, come to the capital, because this is where the money is, this is where the, 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 the industries are. But as Simon said, no, we can fund things remotely and gather the resources where we have to fix the problem. And since the people had the ideas in their local ecosystems where they live, the idea is to say, to, to, to tell them, stay here. Here you are doing well, and this is here where you're going to produce uh, values uh, and jobs. So we have a funny example about that. It's a beekeeper that had a problem with Asian hornets invasions, because in Aquitaine we have these. And so he used a, a free drone, so both free hardware and free software, and he started his business chasing down hornet's nests. Uh, with the drone, so he, he, he built up on top of an existing framework uh, just a, a pipe with some insecticide and then uh, he's selling a service as piloting the drone and training people how to pilot it and starting other businesses. So this is what we want to achieve. And so our goal uh, as um, a, a non-profit is to help these innovators think about their business model, think how they can leverage the communities as Simon said, because we have many resources around that can, for some of them, turn into a business, but for some of them, stay a, a hobby, but all of them contribute to the production of value. And, and then start businesses and produce values and jobs and growth all around the territories just to avoid the exodus of people from the, 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 the countryside to, to the, the, the main cities. cities. Yeah. And, and uh, where, where is uh, Akinetic today in, in terms so, of figures? Oh, okay. Uh, last year, we, um, we labeled uh, 13 projects. So uh, this year, we expect to do about the same number because, well, since we have limited manpower and Akiten is uh, quite a, a, a big territory, we have to, to, to be uh, all around. And in terms of mesh society, this is what we say. I mean, previous incubators told the people, hey, come join us to the main city, Bordeaux, because this is where we are. What we say is people, well, no, stay first where you are. So we move to them. And so for us, it's, it's a constraint, but it is the price to pay for the, the, um, the demonstration we want to make that people uh, that are properly um, helped and, uh, and uh, networked can produce value where they are and everywhere on the region, on the regional area. Well, I guess positive consequences are quite uh, clear with uh, freedom to innovate, but as, as, we, as we said earlier, there are, ne there are obviously negative consequences. Could, it, could we touch briefly on that? Uh, well, so there, there are some challenges that we face. Um, it, because uh, what is being used here is often new approaches to technology, um, you discover that the winners of the previous industrial society try and kill them off using old tools. So, for example, uh, uh, what's happening here is free software, or open source software is being used, open hardware is being used, uh, open data is being leveraged. All of those things uh, get blocked by big industrial concerns and by old thinking governments. And we, we repeatedly find ourselves in positions where people are trying to use software patents to kill off innovation. They're trying to use software patents to put taxes on innovation by small regional organizations to increase the costs. You find anti-competitive behaviors being exhibited because of the legacy of the rules of the industrial society. We see those effects everywhere in the world. It turns out that, um, that you had it right here in France all along. Uh, it, it's actually through equality, it's through um, the, 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 the community or fraternity, uh, it's through uh, the ability to 
use open technologies in ways that satisfy the needs of the whole of society that we succeed. And so the big challenges we're faced with are we're left with the legacy of software patents, of copyrights, of trademark and design rules that are incorrect. And we need to go back and fix them for this new society. Uh, so all of those negative consequences keep on showing up. As an individual citizen, you discover that there are people who don't want you to make videos at home and upload them to YouTube. You'll find your videos get taken down, but the ones by uh, Warner Brothers never do. Uh, and why is that? Well, that's because of old rules being used to inhibit markets. The success they've seen in Aquitaine, or that they're seeing in Aquitaine, and that's also happening in, in Spain, in regional Italy, in other regions throughout Europe, arises from people being able to stay at a small scale and stay below the radar for those old weapons. But as a society, we need to realize that we're in a new world now. We need new rules that recognize the empowerment of citizens. We need government change. And, and where are we at, at that actually today? <laughs> Well, it's more than government change, and this is, was uh, a discussion we had during the panel. Uh, it was uh, Charles Schulz that, that presented that. I mean, government implements policies, and policies are, I mean, to say, formalizations of thinking at the global political level. So basically, you can implement laws that is pass bills. For instance, in France uh, two months ago, the, the bills on uh, higher education and research promoted the priority to f uh, free software uh, by law. So this is an, uh, an implementation by the lawmaker. But you have to look, uh, as Simon said, one step further and see that all these laws derive from a vision. And the vision is that uh, we have constitutional rights uh, for our physical bodies, uh, uh, freedom of, of speech, freedom of association. And then when uh, the uh, digital world opened, Finally, we have new identities, we have new way of interacting with uh, each other. And so it should create new constitutional rights. For instance, interoperability is the equivalent in the digital world to the freedom of association. If I want to associate to other people to share data, then I should interoperate with them. So this is a constitutional right. And in, 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 in that respect, software patents are against this constitutional right, so they should be just uh, wiped out because they shouldn't have existed anyway. I mean, uh, there's the case for patents, but in the case of software patents, they are completely uh, a misthinking of the old system. So this is really what we have to do. We have to educate people and tell them, including lawmakers, that the, the world has changed. And basically, as we were joking, in fact, um, there was a, a quote from Niels Bohr, so the, phys the physicist from the previous uh, uh, millennium, who said once, uh, new ideas do not prevail because they are better than the old ideas. They prevail because the proponents of the older ideas retire. So, it's, it, I mean, there's a short time in which we live in the, in the uh, tech uh, industry, but we have to think in terms of uh, uh, long runs, so it will maybe take a generation to change the law, but slowly things are moving. And as Simon said, in regional areas, people pass local bills or implement local policies. And at the national level, we see the changes like in France two months ago. And at the European level, we expect things to change also. But it does take time. It does take time, but uh, it is positive. What we're seeing is that we're seeing change. I, I think we're seeing good change. We do need everybody to be aware that they are now citizens of this society where they can be funders, creators, repurposers, distributors, advertisers, and not just consumers. So, when, for example, when you're buying a phone, ask yourself, does this phone allow me to play all of those roles? Or is this phone designed to keep me just in the role of consumer? We need to begin to be more aware as we're making choices in daily life, both in things that we are personally acquiring and creating, and also in things that we're doing within our jobs or within our businesses, that we, we need to choose to be 21st century uh, creator, consumer, maker, repurposer, funder, citizens, and not just consumers. Well, thank you for being here and for this discussion. and. Uh Let's believe in change. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.